Okay, let's <coughs> let us continue with the flag and let us touch on continue to touch on this matter about the flag and the importance of the flag. Now here people will say, Well you see right here red is on top and this is eighteen eighty one. And that is true. Eighteen eighty one, October sixth or the sixth of October eighteen ninety seven. Now we see right here the 6th of October 1897 to the 9th of May 1936. This is the order. So let's understand that the changes for this, you understand, both precede, you understand, the King of Kings. You understand, on the throne as the King of Kings. And it's, and, and it's from a certain period of time that we can see is officially. It's nobody else forcing Ethiopia to do this, but it's some internal overstanding or even eternal overstanding that authorized this reworking of the colors. Now, here when we look at these three banners, right, each of these banners are symbolic for one of the, for lack of a better word, we could say tribes, but we prefer to say, let's say nations or peoples, the the the, the, the big groups of people, the Tigray people, the red. They say, some say it's for the Tigray people. Um, the, the yellow right here for the Amhara, the covenant bearers, the Amhara. And then we have the green right here for the Oromo. Some interpret these, these banners and the peoples as kind of merging in this particular zone right here. Thus we have the Lion of Judah, you understand, which encompasses all of those tribal groups, you understand, all of those peoples, all of those nations, whether it's the Tigray nation or the Amhara people or the Ormo, you understand, of the Ormo. Now, the reason for us making this, this connection to this Torah portion is because right here in this, in this week's Torah portion, let's bring this up. Um, or within this um, this present book four, not this week, but it all connects because we're going to see at this week's, which is the 36th, and we're here. I think this is the 30, the 34th right here. This is the 34th numbers two and two. We're speaking about the banners, right? There's a midrash, which is a Jewish study or tenet, right, that taught that. Each tribe, each tribe had a distinctive flag and a different color corresponding to the precious stones on Haron or Aaron's breastplate. So let's get a visual representation of Aaron's breastplate. So let's uh, make this a little bit smaller right here of Aaron's breastplate. Now, this is a continuation of this particular teaching, which we hope to get into a little bit more. Um, let's bring Aaron's breastplate right here. Okay, so here we have Aaron's breastplate, right? Here we have Aaron's breastplate. So what we're learning here is that this is the breastplate of the high priest, right? And it says that the various tribes right the various tribes right here let's do it like this the various tribes had various banners right had various banners bring a little bit of this up front and center had various banners right okay so the tribes had various banners and we're learning this in our study and review Right, and our study and review of this right here of the Midbar, the the book of Hebrew book of Numbers, volume four, and this present Torah portion, these present Torah portion readings and feedings. All right, so this is the this is a a representation. It's a controversy among some of the order of the particular tribes, because here it says Asher and it says Gad. Right, um, and this is Niftali or Niftalim or Naphtali right there. This is Don, 
right? Um, um, Ephraim, um, Benjamin, right here, right? So some would say that the, you know, that the order might be different, so forth and so on. But now we're going to touch on the order, the order, and some interesting things with the order here. So now this is the breast. Plate. Some say these colors correspond to the birth signs and the whole aspect of the 12. N number 12 is what this particular study is, is touching on. It's touching on number 12 and on the fact that there were 12 tribes. And each of them had a particular stone, a gem stone. The breastplate of the high priest was to keep the people always in remembrance, but where? In his heart, right? To keep the people in his heart when he went before before God. You understand? And it symbolized also the banners of the various different tribes, according to this reading and, and feeding here, going to Numbers chapter 2 and 2. Right, so they had a different color, they had a distinctive flag corresponding to the precious stones on Aaron's breastplate, and that it was from these banners that governments, that governments, which are basically corporate entities, you understand, in other words, the people are the one that authorizes a, a government. So the constitution now of Jah's government, our divine heritage, is the Torah, is the scriptures, it's the Bible, all right? And it's from these sort of banners that governments had learned to provide themselves with flags of various colors. Now, we can look in ancient times and see that ancient Afro-Shemitic peoples also practiced this organization. In fact, in... Um, in uh, Macy's Book of the Beginnings, he talks about the Shoftim, and the Shoftim are the judges, and how the system of the Shoftim that Hebrew speaks about was practiced and even still is practiced in parts of Africa or East Africa among those of our Ethiopian or Ethiopic peoples, whether they are called of Sudanese or even Nubians, whether they call themselves Somalians, they still are our Ethiopic peoples because they're in that region of the world. But this system of judges, this system of organization goes way, way back among the Beta Is um, among the Beta Israel, yes, but the Europeans learned it from the Beta Israel. Mm-hmm. Remember the Middle Ages. Remember what we've said about the three tabernacles. The three tabernacles, whether it be the, the black Christians, whether it be the black Jews, whether it be the black um, Hebrews. So in each of these groups today, the black Jews, the black um, Christians, or the ones who have a more African, Ethiopia focus to them, and among the black Muslims slash and Moors, you understand, or Moabites, since they call themselves Moabites, they actually help us out a lot in overstanding the big picture when we put that into the equation, right? That um, it's these peoples, the ancestors of these groups, who all were black people. This is why we can say that, oh, black people are here or there, but if we start to go a little deeper, we find out that sometimes they were like the Merchant of Venice, is really the story of a black Jew, the merchant of Shakespeare, ver merchant of Venice, just like Otello. You, you, you understand? And there's more codes hidden in that as you, you get into that, but a lot of folks have already um, followed, followed that um, thread, you know, the black, African, Ethiopian kind of thread, the Moorish as well, because that's the code word they use in Europe, more and variations of that name. Mm -hmm. But basically at the root is Ethiopian. So what's interesting is that Moses and Aaron in this portion, this week's Torah portion, the 36th Torah portion as well, another very interesting fact, and let's see if we can bring that up, is that um, they met up with his, he met his father-in-law again, Jethro. Now Jethro, he meets Jethro, and he asks um, Jethro to kind of like come with him. You know, he asked Jephro to escort him and the Israelites to the promised land. 
Now, what is interesting is that Jethro, you understand, Jethro basically refuses. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you're in the know, it kind of makes you laugh a little bit, too. Because remember, Jethro was the one who obviously initiated um, um, Moses into that, that second or higher school of wisdom in ancient Egypt, that it was Jethro who had um, initiated him into that, the Medeanite. Remember the woman, the, shep, the, the, the woman getting the water and how some, some Arabs, some black Arabs, probably some Moors, you know, or some, some of them had accosted the woman and how Moses came along dressed up as an Egyptian and he fought them off and he chased them off and they went back to tell their, you know, to tell their uh, father and their father Jethro was like, so where's this man? You know, don't tell me you left this man after he did all this and you were able to get water so forth and so on. Don't don't tell me that you you left him. So this is also within the same, these three portions that we're studying here in the book of um in the book of uh, 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 Numbers, touches on it. So I'm just looking for that quote. I don't know if I highlighted it, you know, and sometimes it's necessary because there's so much information here that you might not get it all at the moment, but then later on you're like, hey, I want to check that out. So highlighting it and taking notes is very good as well. But basically Jethro refused, right? Jethro refused that overture. And he basically went back, you know, he went back to his own, to his own land, right? So that also is, 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 is coming up, that's coming up as well. But um, Jethro was a Medeanite. The Medeanites, Median was like a state in the Ethiopian Empire, in the ancient Ethiopian and Ethiopic empires. It was one of the states like Texas or or New Mexico is a state today, or like Alaska even is a state, or Hawaii is a state, or the Virgin Islands is a state. The same thing was going on 4,000 or so years ago. And they had government. They were, they were on the level of government, seeing ancient Egypt as a colony of ancient Ethiopia. You understand? But they're like the old country, like almost like uh, England is to America, so to speak, right? So from a European perspective reading this, we learn that the governments that learned from the Israelites' example were their governments. It wasn't Moses that had to learn this from the Medeanites, and other historians um, verify that this Shoftim system, you know, almost like the basic military system or organization was well known with, with the, 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 the corporal, the lieutenant, the sergeant, and like the, the 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 captain. In other words, one over ten, one over fifty, one over a hundred, one over a thousand. And for these ones to be the judges to keep law and order, you understand? Know to keep peace in the community. We don't have that in this wilderness here. You understand? Know for all this, all this unregulated and non-transparent activity and craziness. Some, but some things people do see and they turn their backs to. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the wandering, not following Jah's, not keeping Jah's word or having faith in Jah to cast this evil out of our own heads and hearts, out of our houses, and out of our communities. But it begins with, to use Michael Jackson's song on level, with the man in the mirror. Remember how the woman gave up their mirrors, right, to have them beaten into the basin, and the basin is where the priests wash, right, before they enter into the tabernacle. So see that connection there, too. The woman gave it up from their vanities, right, and, but, but yet the mirror still was used, can be used to look at beauty, or the mirror can really use, be used to look at one's reflection and the whole aspect of the water, too that washing of water. Remember, the Torah was given in a place where there was water, fire, fire, water, and wilderness, those three elements, fire, water, and wilderness. All right? So um, another Midrash is cited the words, his standard or his banner over me is love, is fikr. His banner over me is, is love in the Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 4, to teach 
right? Even the Song of Songs teaches, especially, that it was a sign of great love that Jah, that God, that Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, blessed be He, had organized the Beit Israel or the Israelites under standards, under under their own particular banners or standards, like or likened to the ministering angels, like unto the heavenly angels. Or we can even say by inference, our extraterrestrial brothers from other planets. You understand the ministering angels. It all connects, brothers and sisters. But first we have to understand well, what is the order. Let's, let's um, delineate some of this and let's see if we can bring up um, some of these um Examples that we have that we have to show that that's you know um, some of these examples that we have to show right here of some of the standards because what were what were these standards that that the Israelites um, organized themselves in what were some of the standards the tribal standards well some think that it was something to this effect right here let's bring this up. Let's bring this up. Some think it was something like this right here, that you can see Reuben, there's like a flower, a lotus type of a symbol. Simeon, there's like the castle or the rook. Um, Levi um, is the, the menorah. Um, Don, uh, Dean is the scales. Um, Judah is the lion or the African lion, um, distinguished from the Asian lion. Um, Naphtali is like a deer or a hind, a midakwa. God or Gad is like the tent. Interesting, you look at the tent, you know, it has that kind of pyramid symbol. God, Gad, that's how they would have been said. We say Gad, but it was said God. And there's also an idol of other nations called, of the Gentiles called God. That's where we get our word God from. Kind of uh, interesting in the palm branches, too. So that symbology there. Now, Asher, right, was said to be the tree. Asher, it's almost like um, the Ormos also have the tree as their symbol, the Adbar Zaf. Now, um, Issachar, or Yisachar, it seems to be either the donkey. It seems like a donkey, a donkey kind of a symbol right there. looks like a horse, but probably is, 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 it could be a donkey because the burden, the idea of symbolizing that burden. Then we have Zebulon, right? Zebulon is the ships, right? Zabalon is the ships, which is kind of interesting Phoenician connection, Somali, Somali pirate kind of connection right there. And with black people and their seafaringness, even Columbus Navigator was said to be an Ethiopian. Um, and it's interesting because they, they wanted to go to the Indies, and we know that the Indies actually refers to either either the original Ethiopia in the Oriental writing, when they say India, many times it's talking about Ethiopia, or the second India, or the, or, the, or the colony, which is modern India or India. And it's interesting that if Columbus Navigator was really an Ethiopian, or maybe he was of the tribe of Zebulun or a Phoenician, you know what I'm saying, or maybe a Somalian or a Moorish, on that sort of a level, that he did not leave him to where we live, he led them over here. Now, people say, well, that wasn't so good for the people over here, but um, it just adds credence, you, you know, that, that if, it make, if it doesn't make sense, then it's probably not true. But this kind of makes sense because if he was an Ethiopian, why would he lead them to his people since he was one of those who was familiar with this, this, this um, resurrection, this rise of the Europeans that was going on around that particular time. Now, Joseph here is the grapes. You know, Joseph is the grapes, the bunch, right? And then Benjamin, I think, is like a type of a wolf. It's like Benjamin looks like a kind of a, 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 a wolf right there, a symbol of a wolf, right? Now, some say the 12 tribes, that is one way of seeing the standard. But when we look at it, we say we have to go a little bit, probably go much, much deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Go a little bit deeper than that. And this is some of the stuff that we found, some of the, some of the art. We can close this one right here because we got what we need from there um, for now. Um, 
let us bring up some of some from what from from our search. Well, it's not this. We was looking up a guy Pikey right there. Um, when you start to really make sense out of this, you can see what the Europeans have done in their Freemasonry. They've taken ancient ancient mechanics, understand how the mechanics work, and then do a shell game. You understand? Basically, like like Christ. They know that there's power in the teachings of Christ. But they use these teachings themselves, right, for their own purposes, and then they whitewash it. They put it in their own image so it can mirror themselves. You understand? So it can mirror. That's why it can work for them much easier or one who has on a certain level submitted, you understand, to the whitewashing, you know what I mean, and believes that the white man is God, then it can work for them too, looking at the white Jesus to a degree, to a extent, a psychical, it's, it's, it's a stealing of the soul, it's, it's a psychical, it's not spiritual truly, though there is spiritual, there is deep spiritual wickedness behind it. Now, um, where's this picture right here? Um, patient brothers and sisters let's bring up this um okay here we go now this is also another way of looking at this organization right that jah is graciously and lovingly giving to the israelites now this picture is a little bit small but um let's see if we enlarge it a little bit so that you can um potentially see i think you see, yeah i think you can see it on the monitor, you should be able to see this a little bit. This is Numbers chapter 2 and, and 3. So now we have the north, we have the east, the west, the south. We have the holy place, and we have these three, instead of circles, remember the circle and the square is both 360 degrees. So mathematically they're the same, but they look and they appear different. So we don't judge by appearance, we judge by righteousness. You understand? And righteousness means by the mathematics of it. Because math is very precise. Now, it can be interpreted in different ways and figured in different ways. Like, how do you figure? Like, what kind of figurative description are you going to use in that sense? Now, you can see that we have the priests here, right? Um, Moses and Aaron, the Kohathites, right? We have the Merarites. We have the Gershonites right there. This is the inner court. Now, in the next kind of court, right, or this, this will be the, the kind of, um, this is we like the outer court here. This is the courtyard right here, and this is the tabernacle. So now we have the 12 tribes. So we have numbers going on, too, in a very interesting kind of way. But we have 12 on the outside, the 12 tribes. So each of those tribes have their own particular peculiar banner. Right, and this is overstanding the twelve. Now we have twelve disciples too, so we have the exoteric metaphysics of it, and we also have the esoteric. Right in the New Testament, we have the esoteric, where the twelve tribes of is where, 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 where the twelve tribes are upgraded by the twelve disciples, and the twelve disciples show us the twelve aspects of ourselves, you understand, and the 12 parts, the 12 powers in man, some call it the 12 powers in man, there's a very good book by um, Fillmore, Charles Fillmore, that speak about the 12 powers in man, which is a more, I would say, spiritual, or even say Christian way of not just, not just um, reading about it and glorying in Christ, but now doing the actual spiritual inner work, the hard the hard work, which for some may be the hard work, but it's truly the fruitful, the fruitful work. Let's see if we can find this right here, because we had some of the, the tribes, um, other formations of the tribes, um, other uh, pictorials that um, were, were out here. Um, let's see. Okay, let's, let's try another suitcase right here. We might have put it in. Okay, here we go right here. There, here's some other um, tribes um, from both the 12 tribes of, we spent 12 tribes of Israel, but from the Hebrew, black Hebrew, um, Afro-American Israelites, as well as from 
say, the 12 tribes of Israel, Rastafari, Ethiopian World Federation, originally speaking, organization. All right? So, um, double fold, speaking on the double blessing, the 12 tribes both put the, of Israel, Rastafari, Ethiopian World Federation organization, first of all, having that structure of the federation, that corporate structure is a workable structure. This is why we've adopted the bylaws for our churchical activity, just, just adding certain details based on our constitution, you understand, the Bible. But having that is a perfect organizational model or template, and we already know it was workable in the day of Malaku Emanuel Bayan, as well as for 40, almost like almost 40 or so years, you understand, until we get to roughly around 67 and then come to this real wandering phase in this wilderness. But what you're seeing here is from Dendera. Now, from Dendera, right, we call this the Dendera 12 tribes. Now, this is out of Egypt. Now, notice the slight similarity or difference. Here we have Benjamin, right? Benjamin here seems like some sort of a ram. You understand, a ram right there. Then we have Reuben. Reuben is like Taurus. Right, it's like Taurus or the bull. Then we have Simon or Simeon, which is like the twins, right there. Right, Simeon the twins, or one could say Gemini. We have Levi right here, which is like the the um, Kepra, or the Chepra, which is interesting because the cherubim, the guardian, the Levite purpose, the Kepra, the you, you understand the similarity Moses out of Egypt. So this symbol right here, you know, saying, which could also f figure as a glyph or figure as a fidel, you know, saying, to take it out of the um, um, animal kind of um, the zoopomorphic, take it out of the zoopomorphic to represent any physical thing now taking on a higher level of it to represent concepts or ideas. So coming out of Egypt was to take it to the higher level but the foundation that they were familiar with was this right here. So here we have Judah, and right, um, 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 and the the Leo here or the lion, plus the 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 woman right there. Some say one of the goddesses or one of the attributes. Here we have Zebulun right here. This might be Sheshat, perhaps. You understand? Remember the seas here, perhaps the seven seas, metaphysically speaking. We have Isachar right here, which is the scales, right? Then we have Dan right here, which is a seems like a type of a scorpion, right? Then we or like Scorpio. We have Gad right here, which seems like the Sator Sagittarius. Both it has a two the two heads right here, almost like two faces. Then we have Asher, right? Asher right here. And Asher seems like the Capricorn kind of coming out of the water. You know what I'm saying? You see the coming out of the water right here. So the double nature right there, right, of Asher. Remember what Asher, the meanings of Asher in Hebrew as well. And then the connection with Osar, you know what I'm saying? Or Yisha, you know what I'm saying? Jeshurun, Yeshurun. Then we have Naphtali here. And notice it's like Aquarius, the water bearer, holding the two vessels and the water coming out, or the libation, some call it the libation offering. Then we have Joseph. Now, if you notice, Joseph right here is two fishes. So one could say Pisces. So if one's look at it, it's, it's, it's moving from like Joseph in that sense to Naphtali, you know what I'm saying, considering that, that Old Testament order. But we have to reconsider that, that Old Testament order of the tribes. And, and, and here is why, right? And here's the point why. Let's go back to, go forward into the Midbar, right? So we recognize that he organized them, right? He organized them because of the purpose of his love, right? Now let's go to, let's go to that list of the, that list of the tribes, if we didn't already pass it. Did we already pass it? I think we did. Let's go back a couple of pages and go to the list of the tribes. All right. 
Here we go, right here. Now, this is the order of the tribes. I remember, this is the wilderness. And to show that there was a movement. You see, there, this was the wilderness movement. In other words, there was a movement going on. But let's understand what this movement was about and how it was going on so we can even prophetically see our futures in coming out of this wilderness and entering into the land of his promise. So we have in numbers over here, numbers 1, 1 to 5, right? Counting from 1 to 12, we have Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Yisachar, falsely said Isaacar, but Issachar, Yisachar, um, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, um, Benjamin, Don, Asher, Gad, Naphtali, right? Now in Numbers 1, and 20, uh, 1 verses 20 to verse 43, we have Reuben, Simeon, same. But here we have Gad moving up from 11th place to 3rd place. Judah moving down from 3rd place to 4th place. Now this is an interesting note that Judah was actually the 4th born. So when we go to um, the patriarchal blessing, you understand, in Genesis, I think, 49, you, we can see a different order there from, the, from Moses' blessing in the book of Deuteronomy. But here in Numbers, you see this change here now. Um, Yisachar goes from fourth to fifth, right? And so we see this, this, this order, a change of order here. And then when it gets right here, we have Naphtali remaining at 12, right? But Asher moving down. So we see a reorganization there, right? Now this is on page 29 of the fourth book or by Midbar, the Midbar is on page 29. So let's just read um, what's below. We'll keep that on the screen right there and read what is connected, um, what is connected with this um, reordering. It seems like a reordering of the tribes. What's up with this reordering of the tribes? The tribes are mentioned in a totally um, different a different order. Now the the note over here um, that we read earlier that touched on this um, different ordering, right? On this different ordering of the tribes was interesting as well. Um, how their their order was changed, or why their order was changed? Because when you look at Revelation, right? In Revelation. There is a a difference now. Judah in Revelation is first, so we have Judah moving up from fourth to first place. Now, is is, is this to be understood just on on a on a so-called uh, zodiac level, a heavenly level? Remember the first the first portion of this reading talked about, remind Genesis 15 and 5, look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, so shall your offspring be. Some say that's just saying that you're, you're going to have a lot of offspring. But there is a heavenly connection. There is a heavenly, a heavenly connection um, to this as well. There's a heavenly connection to this as well, and it's connected with the the banners. Now, um, when you examine that there was a consequence to Jacob's blessing, Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, right? Ephraim and Manasseh. But let's um let's let's show this this chart right here because we didn't we didn't give the Black Hebrew Israelites now on the national level, right? Remember that this can be understood when we look at this right here. We can understand this and we can understand this in the birthstone way, right? In an individual, personal, one can say the subjective way, right? But we, can, well, we must not lose sight of the objective. The objective was speaking to a nation of people, right? And that's the blessing for Israel. That's when we talk about there's a difference between Israel and the so-called Gentile church. Now, here's the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Um, and there are many different um, mansions, you could say, 
associated there too, or in our Father's house, vis-a-vis -vis the 12 tribes of Israel. So there's different examples of the 12 tribes of, um, of, of Israel and different um, parts of the family, you know, different groups interpret this differently. So we're not saying that this is universally accepted by all, but it does have, have a very powerful resonance, especially coupled with the corresponding documentation that um, can and has been used to verify or add substance to this. But if we look at just the first, the tribes that are already um, um, viewable, because there's a few more down here, we'll scroll it up. First, we have Judah right here, right, as the Negroes. Judah here as the so-called Afro American, Afro American, or the Afro American is Judah. You understand? Is is the so-called Afro Americans, right, or the North American black people? Benjamin here is said to be Guyana, Guyana, and the West Indies. You understand that when the people were brought to different regions, it's although sometimes they were they were scrambled. They may have sent ones from from Jamaica or the West Indies to the mainland or back and forth. Therefore, Judah and Benjamin historically also, within the teaching of the Beit Israel, have a close relationship. You understand that means the so-called West Indian black people and the Afro-American black people. But because they both have different masters, you see, when they come into the same master, then, then you know, we can work together. But when one is saying, I'm English, I'm under the Queen of England, I'm British or whatnot like that from the whitewash perspective. And the other one is saying that I'm American, I ain't no I ain't no Westie or West Indian or various different names and other things that I use. You can see that divide and conquer right there. You know what I'm saying? But when all of that is put on the side and put in the garbage can, we find a remarkable unity among the different tribes. But see, the European at the highest level, the so-called Gentiles, they understand this. They know this. And the system that we're living in has been configured to keep this, keep this divided and conquered. Because if, if this ever or when this comes together, not if, really when, you understand, when it comes together, when that 144,000 are, are online, spiritually speaking, you understand, in spirit and soul and even in body, you understand, when they when that comes to pass, this is the foundation of the true world order or the real new world order. And yes, there will be a new world order. The question really that, that the Illuminati is trying to put in Germany in your mind is that it's theirs. The real question is whose will it be? Will you allow them to do this and, 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 and stay wandering in the wilderness and die in the wilderness or will you come out of Babylon? So the, the third tribe here, is Levi, which is Hispaniola or Haiti, Hispaniola, and that's Dominican, Haitian, Dominican, Haitian. Now, there's something very, very, um, um, well, not Dominican, actually, Dominican will be Hispaniola is divided. Remember, they're twins. You have Levi and Simeon here, right? So you have Dominican Republic, right? His, the island is one island called Hispaniola, but they have the Haitians, Levi, right? Um, whose ancient nation or ancient tribe as a people, as a collective, as a corporate entity is related to the prophecies and the word concerning Levi. And then you have the Dominicans or Dominican Republic, which is Simeon. Now, it's very interesting because you know the, the biblical story of Simeon and, and Levi, and it, it all starts to make sense, even from the, the prophetical, eschatological of it now over here they have Joseph, right? The tribe of Joseph, and then as a subset Ephraim and Manasseh, and they put the Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, and then Gad is the North American Indians, and Reuben is the Seminole Indians, and now overstand right here, Isaacar or Issachar, Issachar is Mexico. I thought this was very very interesting in speaking about tribes and speaking about the Afro American and the. Mexican and the Hispanic 
You know what I'm saying? Like, they try to divide and conquer us. And, you know, some um, Hispanics, depending on uh, um, appearance, might seek to be identified more with the dominant group, just like some so-called African Americans, some black folks do the same thing. Depends on if they can get if they can get over. You know what I'm saying? So we shouldn't just look at say, oh, they always do that when we have Negroes doing the same sort of thing. So here is like a center list of that. Down here, Issachar is the Mexicans and the Aztec. Now, from the European perspective. Right from the white man's perspective, who does he? Who does this Gentile, this this foreign national, who does this Gentile over here has the biggest problem with on the horizon? We hear it in this election year with black trying to keep black people down, Negroes, blacks, African American uh, down, divided, and everything in 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 the same um 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 how to make it woolly lynchism on the woolly lynchism, right, and on the artificial fourteenth and thirteenth and fourteenth amendment. You know what I mean? To think civil rights, not human rights, although some are waking up. And also to stop this immigration, not just from all over the world, but in particular from Mexico. Why that? And this is where I, I, I then say, well, taking what the Hebrew Israelites, are the Hebrew Israelites right on this? Well, I took this, right, this Judah, right, and took Isaacar or Issachar, right, and then I look over here at this particular map right here, and I see very interesting that in this area, in Numbers chapter 2, verses 3 to 31, Judah and Yisachar, right, and that would be interpreted the Afro-American, Negro, Blacks, Mexicans, you, you are at the very top of the whole Beta Israel movement forward. And they're the ones also that is giving the so-called European American, the Gentiles over here, the the greatest run for their money, so to speak, you know, who are really, you know, the, he's trying to keep, keep the Hispanics. When, when he say the Hispanics, he's talking about the Mexicans. He's talking directly about the Mexicans. So we have to avoid falling into that kind of divide and conquer mentality. I know we see about Africa and Ethiopia, we say, what do the Mexicans have to do with it? Do you really understand the Mexican history? You understand? I mean, I mean, really, and and really see what the hidden history is. And there's a lot of hidden history out there that also connects with the Native American. So the greatest thing is divide and conquer. Notice, notice how the European always trying to keep his German, uh, German, um, Italian, um, um, all the different, uh, you know, ethnicities. He have Polish and French and you know. The European, Spanish, and English. You know, he tried to keep that unity among himself, even bringing over the Russians and everybody. You know, bringing over the the Ten Horn people. You know, the Slavics and the rest of them over here. You know, who somehow they have enough money to bring them over here and put them in in relatively decent accommodations. You understand that is like that is like staying at a hotel compared to where they live in Eastern Europe. You know what I'm saying? So he understands the European, he understands these differences, right, amongst himself and others, and he uses these things. And we don't understand who we are, so we can't understand who our brothers and sisters are or where the historical points um, we can identify, you know what I'm saying, and show that we have a commonality. You know, we may have individual differences or group differences, dynamics, other things, but we need to get out of, for example, the gangland thing between the, the black gangs and the Hispanic gangs. Can't, can't you see how the devil just flipped it? You know, just flipped it on them. So you have the Hispanics killing the blacks and the blacks um, killing the Hispanics out there in California in different cities. And the bigger picture, you know, needs to be told. And there are many of the Hispanics who... Many of them are waking up to the Hebrew Israelite form of the the ministering of this gospel, or this good news. You understand of God and the Moshiach, of Yeshua or Yahweh Shai, as they would say. You understand, but you have to understand the bigger picture. You know, there's a bigger picture dynamic, and this is what this book of Numbers is speaking of. So we see right here the order of the tribes changing. And I'm going to go check this out, but I think when we look at Revelation, we can see a similarity 
in the order and the representation. This is very. This is a very key difference that now uh, Yisachar is right there with Judah. And seeing how more of the African Americans and the Hispanics, especially the Mexicans and others, are beginning to see that they have more in common. I mean, even the Hispanics for Yisachar using what they are able to learn and, and, and adapt or whatever like that from the African-American civil rights struggle for their own struggles for inclusiveness and equality on land, that, that them and their ancestors have a better claim before God and righteous man. You understand, before God and righteous man, how can we deny that, that this country over here, recognizing how we were brought over here, does not belong to equally or even more so to these other groups. So we should support their efforts. We really should support their efforts, even in the bigger picture of things. You understand? It keeps our enemies occupied with, you know, um, issues that they would like to run away from. You understand? So they won't run away from those, those issues. So we should lend support to them as well in those struggles. So here's to, to kind of make this kind of connection right here. Though we're still speaking on the tribes and, 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 and how do we account for it. First of all, there's a double blessing. Now, the study on Ephraim taught us that there's a double blessing. There's this duality. You understand? Even those who have studied Ma'at, you understand, which is one of the mystery school teachings that the wisdom of Egypt that Moses was familiar with, although he might not have figured it in the same way that an Egyptian priest would, you understand, we have the essence, the principles of it in the Torah, in the scriptures, you understand, and even in that word righteousness, you know, righteousness with God and man. There's a duality right there. You can't just be right with God and say, well, everybody, you know, nobody recognizes that, so forth and so on, because that, that, that could be a delusion right there. You understand? There's, there, there is a testimony from those within, and there's a testimony from those without. Scriptures teach us this. So there's a link between the Mexican and the, and the African American, you understand, in the covenant. In the covenant, there is a very key, key link right here. Now, the challenge is to make this link more practical. You know what I'm saying? Now, we can know this here, but how do we bring it into real working dynamics, both at home, on the continent, and, and abroad as well? You know what I'm saying? So there is much that the national or the nationhood chart of the 12 tribes or of the Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites have that is very important and should be kept in, in study in memory, you understand, but we should study this. Don't dismiss this. There's a lot that it really has. Though they might be blind, many of the black Hebrews to his majesty and the, the true Ethiopian Hebrew connection, you understand, and that the New Testament, Paul said that many of them are zealous to establish their own righteousness because now they know that they're Israelite of that connection, but have not submitted to the righteousness of God. You understand? And that is to say, submitting themselves to the King of Kings, Ketamawi Haile Selassie I, and his Christ, who they say they submit to. But you have to see the fullness of the, of, of, of the picture, which is to see the full vision, is to see the full um, prophecy right here. And this kind of would help us to probably dovetail this one right here, because we don't want to go a little bit deeper in this. So I'm saying that there are two applications of the 12 tribes idea. One is the individual, the personal, which we see exampled on a certain level in the 12 tribes of Israel, you know what I'm saying, um, teaching the organization, the Rastafari Ethiopian World Federation, originally um, organization that's a Rastafari, um, um, a mansion of Rastafari, that that right there has a real-time application. Although some might in our um, scholarly opinion made more of it, you understand, and stretch the application beyond the real time. The real up, up on that is then looking in Christ and the 12 powers of Yeshua, the 12 powers of Christ, and that's a book right there, or the 12 powers that are in man, which is the Charles Fillmore book, which then shows us the, the disciples, you understand, and the real the real inner work, the real spiritual work, the real daily work to get our heart and our mind 
the real metaphysical practice. You understand? So we really are are growing in the life of Christ. We're not making ourselves believe some, but we're having the real experience. That's very, very important. We're experiencing this word in real time. You understand? And also coming to the fellowship of true brothers and sisters who also have submitted to that discipline. You know, so there's, there is that aspect of it. Remember, and then there's the national aspect. When they first were born, the 12, the 12 um, sons of Jacob, you understand, including the, the daughter, you understand, the 13th, and there's where you get the, ooh, number 13 from. You understand, the 13th tribe, you, you know what I mean? But there's some interesting research along those lines really do link with, with the heavenlies. And we see that in Joseph in the vision that Joseph saw, where he said he saw the 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowing to him, bowing to one star. Some say that's Nibiru 2012, or that's Nibiru 2012 and beyond. You understand? But he saw this particular prophetic event happening where he said he saw 11 stars, right, bowing, and the sun and the moon bowing. You know what I mean? And that's very interesting how that goes. Some of the Zeta, the Zeta films kind of talk about that, the 2012 films, that really it is this star, this, this eighth millennial Kokeb or star, that its gravitational pull causes, you know, causes the other planets to tilt, to lean back, so to speak, when it comes into particular orbit. And this, many say, and we say that there's a lot to this, that the scriptures justify and verify are linked with the, the, the day of the Lord, in other words, right? But Joseph, Joseph had this. Now, Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, here, um, and there's a question that we have for some of the Hebrew Israelites. When you say Joseph, and then you have Manasseh, Ephraim and Manasseh, are you saying Ephraim and Manasseh are just limited here? Since they were sons, they came out. So there must be some outbirth either from this, or we're just speaking about a portion of this tribe. We know that a portion, the lost sheep came out here who are Judah, but they have lost that name. You, you understand? They have taken on the name Negro. They've taken on the name um, um, Afro-American. Afro-American is a sort of a step up, but the true name, biblically, scripturally, is Ethiopian. You understand? The true covenant name in, the, in context, not with careless Ethiopians today. You understand, which are basically, that's an identity thief. You know, they say they're Ethiopians, but they don't hold to the King of Kings or as Christ. That's like identity thief. That's, they're really resident aliens. You understand, those careless Ethiopians or others who are on our promised land, they're really resident aliens. You understand, if and when the truth be told. But we have Judah, the kingship of Judah, to be found in Ethiopia. And that's why when we look at the Ethiopian World Federation, the connection over here, and the land grant, it, it comes through the Afro-American or the, or the Judahite, the so-called Negro, because you see how that's the first tribe. That tribe now has the responsibility because of the link with kingship. You understand? A kingship that the Bible tells us would always have a man to sit on that particular throne. So in order for that to be true, so we have a duality here as well, right? We have a duality here as well because in order, in order for that to be true, right, there has to be a king's line. And we see this king's line. You understand? We see this king's line in and through Edomawi Haile Selassie first. We see this line in Moan Besazem Negeri Yehuda. You understand, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia, upon the real throne of David. I mean, it's, it's, it's biblical, it's scriptural. You understand? So the first level we have to do is, is learn this. You understand? And then pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us now, what does this mean now in our practical application, in our moving forward? You understand? What does this mean in the moving forward? Now, we also find that interesting Ephraim, and a Manasseh connection, too. We're going to teach on the Ephraim-Manasseh connection because Ephraim and Manasseh are also linked with the two powers that we have to use. Each of us, the, the power of affirmation, the yay, yay, Ephraim, and the nay, nay, Manasseh because Ephraim means doubly fruitful and Manasseh means forgetting. So the Manasseh part of the people 
you know what I'm saying, are the lost sheep. The lost sheep are under the Manasseh aspect. You know what I'm saying? They're not under the Ephraim aspect. But now there's many who are under this prosperity Negro aspect because Ephraim means doubly fruitful. That means you are you are rich and you're fat with a pH, like a PhD, you know, fat with a pH. It's interesting how we use that fat, you know, keep it fat, you know what I mean, in the, in the good sense or the black sense of fat because the same thing the scripture says, that you shall be fat, you understand, and, and, and flourishing, and, you know what I mean, that means that healthy, you understand, not starving to death. I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless your land. Keep this covenant, live within the contract. Live within the covenant, but the lost sheep didn't do that, right? And the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach said that He would scatter us throughout the world. So we find this international kind of Beta Israel connection and Black connection all over the world. You know, saying even some of the brothers and sisters might have been mingled in with these strangers these Gentile nations until for all intents and purposes they seem to be Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? We don't judge by the parents. This is what the scripture says. We're not judging by our parents. Nothing here. We're only judge sickness or disease in that sense. You have to give it a diagnosis by its appearance, but we don't judge by our parents. We judge by righteousness. So here's where we bring this all together right here concerning the truth of what the Hebrew Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites, concerning our nationality, especially for these, these three tribes. There's an absolute correspondence with Judah, Benjamin, Binyam, and Levi. There's an absolute correspondence as well, by extension, with Simeon. You understand that, that, that in a very elementary way, you understand, can be verified. You know what I'm saying? Joseph, interesting link right here. We have a little question mark about this. Why doesn't this come in with this or, or, or with this right here? But, you know, we, we still can be guided in that. Now, Gad, the American Indians, and Reuben, very interesting connection. Uh, Yissachar, you know what I'm saying, between the two burdens. That's interesting because we have the two Americas, North America and South America and Mexico. You understand, it's right there in between these two burdens. But the main connection in this Torah portion, reading and feeding, is between the uh, Judah in exile, the Falashes of the West, so-called Negroes, uh, blacks, and coloreds, or Afro-Americans, Afro-Americans, and uh, Mexico, you understand, the Mexicans, you understand, or the Hispanics, you understand, especially those who identify with that African and from a more studied perspective, Ethiopian connection. We have a lot of Hispanic um, Rastafari, you, you know, many of them from different parts of the diaspora. And it's them too that must be called. You have to remember what, what has been given to us to look at the, the big Yovasan picture. And so we put this out there to those brothers and sisters. Some of them we we know or have communicated with directly. You understand the Hispanic Rastafari, the Spanish speaking Rastafari. This is to make that link right there in our tribes. Who are we? You understand? Who are we? And to get our father's house, you understand, in its proper order. All right, my brothers and sisters, so, so here's, a, here's a basic connection. But you have to recognize the ruler of your people. This is what has been our message to all the tabernacles, whether it's the so-called black Christians, you understand, whether it's the so-called black Jews. You understand, according to the order of Scripture and according to the revelation in our time, Getting off of the politics and the little sectarian nonsense, tribal nonsense. Look at the big prophetic picture. You know what I'm saying? So we're speaking to people of faith when we say this, as well as the, the, um, the, the, the Moors or the, or the Islamic, the black Islamic groups as well. You see how we've touched on Elijah, that connection with Elijah and Elijah's um, connection as well. You understand with the Ethiopian Hebrews uh, coming before the time to prepare. You understand 
a people because people don't recognize just how close you know saying, we as lost sheep were to almost extinction back in those days and time. We give the credit to um, Martin Luther King Jr., but really the credit goes to Elijah in that sense of the prophecy. So more to come, y'all willing. Stay tuned, my brothers. Pray and study and watch. Be diligent. You understand? And, um, you know, we, we we're trying to teach this because once ones begin to grasp it fully, then then this this work, this labor, they can really follow their calling in 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 God and Christ. You understand? So that we can get our father's house together. You understand? But it's it's really that individual. So individually speaking, when we're dealing with these tribal um links, there is that individual link which the twelve tribes of Israel, T T I, has correctly. You understand? Know there is that when we talk about astrology, instead of when somebody asks you what's your sign, you understand? You shouldn't talk about these false gods. You understand? You should talk about the sons of Beta Israel. You understand? Know the sons of, of Israel. The sons of Yaakov. You understand? Know because it's Jacob that we are even in that eschatological sense, surname because of Jacob. We are Israel. We are the faithful. You know, send Ethiopians at home and abroad, that diaspora. And it's time for us to come out of this wilderness and to enter into the promised land before it's too late. You know, we're living in we're living in an ideal and a prophetic period of time right now, and there's much that we can do while we're in a relative state of so called peace, a relative state, but to pray and to work. That is the command. That is the call. But stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. Ras Tafari.